Race number five at Ascot will jump at 3.25. It's the Amelia Park handicap over 1,400 metres. The replay horse, it's number five, Verve de Vega, making all at Ascot for the second time in a row. Gangbuster is getting up on the inside, double digits not in the race after racing wide. Inside the 200 though, it's all Verve de Vega at the moment. It's three lengths in front from Barricky Beaks. Gangbuster, Adrian McPhee's running on late, but Verve de Vega's going to walk in. Verve de Vega has won easily by about three and a half. That was an excellent performance by Verve de Vega and another quality ride from Perth's top apprentice at the moment in Taylor Stone. They go on top here. They've got to turn the tables on number three, Oliver's Travels from a start a couple of months ago. If you look at the weights and measures, you'd have to fancy Oliver's Travels to come out on top again. I just think that maybe these horses are going in different directions here. I think Oliver's Travels may have peaked this preparation. He was a little bit disappointing at Pinjarra last start. That was only seven days ago. He failed to settle in what was a pretty slowly run race. He is worthy of respect here. He's run really good ratings for this kind of grade. He goes in as my second pick. Number seven, Cougar Knights beat Atlanta Blue in a trial and then came out and won and beat Lord Ludlow first up. Good speed figures out of that race, even though it was at Pinjarra. Certainly respected here. And number two, Max Almighty is third up after a couple of seconds. Always flies home if they go too quick. Max Almighty will be the one to watch. My top selection in race number five. I think this is really competitive. Number five, Verve de Vega. From number three, Oliver's Travels. Seven, Cougar Knights. And number two, Max Almighty. Race number six at Ascot will jump at five past four. It's the owners only supporting WA Racehorse Owners Handicap over 1,400 metres. The replay horse, we're going to go back to the Ascot Carnival and look at number one, Private Dancer in the Champion Philly Stakes. Pike's winding up, Mickey Moto coming down the outside with 250 left to go. Private Dancer hit the front, but here comes the favourite. It's Mickey Moto ranging up, joins Private Dancer over on the inside, running on his special alert. Mickey Moto has to dig an Art Series, is coming late. It's Art Series driving up inside of Special and the Private Dancer. There's little doubt in my mind that the best form reference coming into this race is that champion Phillies run a private dancer it was just beaten in the nose by Art Series and I'm totally willing to forgive the run in the WA Guineas just seven days later. It's so hard to back up these young Phillies in such quick time. As trialled behind uh, Festive Express beaten just under three lengths and comes here first up for Trevor Andrews. If it reproduces its form of the spring, it'll be very, very hard to be here. The query horse is certainly number five, Art Extreme, trained by Ross Price down at Capel, is unbeaten, comes to town now, has won two from two at Bunbury. It's really hard to assess this horse. I'm really surprised at how short she is in the market compared to the champion Phillies runner up. Other horses worth a mention, number seven, Mirresistible, trialled really nicely, was running on well and did a similar thing in its race when it made its debut behind Dashing Affair. What's the query here? He's 1100 to 1400. They are, she's by Machino and he tends to get these horses that want really short trips. The other horse worth a mention is number 11, UMI, but I just think it is probably the best of the rest. It has been failing in weaker races since breaking its maiden at Bunbury. My on top selection in race number six. I'm going with the value. Number one, Private Dancer. From number five, the favourite, Art Extreme. Seven, Irresistible. And 11, UMI. Race number seven at Ascot will jump at 4.45. It's the Magic Millions Yearling Sale 19 to 20 February handicap over 1,400 metres. The replay horse, it's a horse looking for its hat trick on Saturday, it's Giraffe. Here he is winning at Ascot on the 7th of February. Now starting to loom large, two lengths, Glen Albin, double the pro at the 200, shaken up, challenged by Giraffe. Giraffe double the pro at two lengths, Glen Albin with 100 left to go. Giraffe put paid to double the pro, extends, pulls away. Glen Albin runs to third, Yindi from well back, but Giraffe too good. Giraffe beat double the pro, third. Giraffe is a four-year-old having just his fourth start on Saturday. It's clear that the Parnham family have a bit of an opinion about this horse and he was uber impressive in the replay race winning by almost two lengths he's certainly going through his grades he's come out of a couple of decent maidens one of which he won and one of which he finished behind Fryer away who franked the form by winning in a handicap subsequently goes on top here i think it's one of the better bets of the day number six royal command it represents team williams there a little bit out of form as i've mentioned before but it does have that verve de vega form lines and the only reason it got beat by a length that day was because willie pike misjudged the pace and got too far 
while back. It's certainly the danger here. Number two, Belter can improve from its last start when it was wide throughout. Did quite well to only finish 2.8 lengths behind the smart um, Royal Missile. And then number nine, Rebellion Hair has come up favourite here. I think it's probably got a reasonable amount of talent. I'm just not sure as to what its best trip will be. I'm willing to bet around it given that it's over 1,400 and it may well be better suited at a mile. My on top selection in race number seven is number eight, Giraffe, to beat number six, Roll Command, two, Belter, and nine, Rebellion Air. Race number eight at Ascot will jump at 5.22. It's the St. Patrick's Race Day 17th March handicap over 1,600 metres. The replay horse, it's number three in the Cerise and White of Bob and Sandra Peters, Western Temple, going head to head with Oliver's Travels last month. Noski goes for home on Oliver's Travels and he quickly put up two and a half to three. Western Temple, Settlers Creek. He draws the whip on Oliver's Travels at the 150. Western Temple coming after him, Settlers Creek down the outside. Gamer Whipple, Oliver's Travels desperately ridden with Western Temple lunging at him. They went to it and it was. Blue. That was an excellent first up performance by Western Temple. I think that form around. Olive's Travels is more than good enough to be winning this race. Second up, expect an improvement and Durant in form. Gets the three kilo claim from Brody Kirby. A real lot to like here. Has been a bit of a serial place getter. I don't think he's a money muncher. I think he's a really good horse that's found the right race here. It goes on top. Other horses to consider, number four, Morga has won two from two since coming back from a very long spell. Gary Hitchcock has done a wonderful job with this horse. I think it can beat number two again, that's Taxidermy. Taxidermy's got poor head-to-heads against both number four, Morga, and number three, Reston Temple. He's as honest as the day is long. I think he's got more races in him. I just don't think it's on Saturday. And looking for other value in the exotics, maybe number six, My Grace, representing Team Williams. You can't knock the form, but the Williams team, they haven't had a winner here at Ascot this year, that will turn. But um, in this race with Western Temple also representing Bob Peters, I think that's the one to be on. My top selection in race number eight is number three, Western Temple, to beat number four, Mulga, number two, Taxidermy, and number six, My Grace. It's now time to nominate the best bets on the Ascot card. I'm gonna go early and late. Start off with race number two, and a Cetro to make it two for two for Adam Durant. And then later in the day, race number seven, Giraffe to make it three in a row for Neville Parnham. It's easy to stay up to date with everything that's happening at Perth Racing. Either log onto our website or follow us on one of our social media channels. Until next time on The Box Seat, bye for now.